How many remember Carl Kanai? In the proto days before the term streetwear had ever been dreamt up, there were guys working on the future, and Carl Kanai was one of them. Before the fashion industry ever considered street to be a profitable niche, guys like Carl Kanai were laying the groundwork for what would later change the fashion landscape completely. His designs sparked the trend of rapper-inspired clothing, bringing the look and style originated in the hood into the mainstream. Carl Kanai could be looked at as the godfather of the quote-unquote urban market. I mean, he was FUBU before FUBU. But what happened? Why couldn't Carl Kanai stick around like some of the other pioneer brands? Well, let's find out. I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com, and this is the life and times, the rise and fall and rise again of Carl Kanai. But before we get started, don't forget to smash that like button for me. Liking and sharing the video is the only way to get the YouTube algorithms to notice us and in turn suggest us to more people, which is subsequently the only way that we can continue to grow as a channel. I can't thank you guys enough for all the support that you've given. And with that being said, let's get right in. Born in Costa Rica, at two years old, Carl and his family immigrated to the United States, settling in Brooklyn. This was the 1980s New York when rap was in its infancy. It was a new art form created by the streets and it was taking the culture by storm. Now Carl, being a young kid in a new country, soaked up all of the influence. He originally tried his hand at rap, but it wasn't really his thing. So he tried DJing, but that didn't work out either. And wondering how he could make his mark, he decided that if he couldn't be a rapper, then he would be the person dressing them. Carl had been introduced to the idea of making clothes by his dad, who got his own clothes made by Taylor. So Carl started designing his own fits and getting them custom made as well. His friends would always ask him where he got the stuff from, so Carl started making stuff for them too. Word spread, and by 19, Carl was designing clothes for tons of kids around the neighborhood. At this point though, Carl was designing the stuff, but they still had the tailor's tag inside. And after being accused of cap one day by a girl who didn't believe that he had made the outfits, because his name wasn't on the label, Carl knew that he had to take things to the next level. But first, he needed a name. He felt he couldn't just call it Carl Williams because that's too generic, and he was right. So he settled on Carl Kanai, because can I was a question he often asked himself. Can I be successful? Can I build a clothing brand? And at the time, he couldn't quite answer those questions with confidence. But by calling himself Carl Kanai, every day he would be forced to seek an answer. And little did he know then, the answer would actually be a resounding yes. In 1989, Carl moved to California with a thousand bucks in his pocket and a dream to launch his brand. He grinded while he was out there making connections. And soon, he had gathered the resources to open up a store on Crenshaw Boulevard. He scraped up what little he had to open the shop, but soon he began to find a bit of rhythm. However, unfortunately for Carl, he wound up getting robbed a few months later. And after all his hard work, his clothing samples, his sewing machines were all gone and he was back to square one. But not being one to give up easy, he started frequenting trade shows to grow his footprint in the industry. And though his store in Los Angeles was closed, he soon met somebody who would change his life, Carl Jones of Cross Colors. Cross Colors already had a foothold in the fashion world with sales upwards of $89 million. And Carl Jones was a fan of Carl Kanai. Cross Colors eventually signed Carl Kanai under their parent corporation, Threads for Life, which gave them access to the stores nationwide. And at the time, proto street fashion was a new thing. Rap had continued to grow all throughout the 90s, 
And by the end, it was mainstream. And stores were noticing this as well. So they wanted to carry clothes that the rappers were wearing. The demand for hip-hop streetwear suddenly exploded. Fat Farm and FUBU were founded in 1992. Wu-Tang Clan bursted onto the scene wearing polo sport that year. And everyone wanted Timberland boots. By 1994, Carl Kanai was projected to gross 40 million worldwide. Now, if you want to round back then, this is what they referred to as the G-Funk era, with East Coast versus West Coast rap beefs and the golden era of modern R&B. And if you were a star on the cover of the 90s Source magazine, then you probably were wearing Carl Kanai. And during the height of Tupac's fame, he was rarely seen without a Carl Kanai logo across his chest, apocryphally stating that he wouldn't even charge Carl Kanai for advertisement considering he wanted to see everybody win. And considering that this was the days before social media or even internet use, having a rapper seen on magazines wearing your stuff was the highest form of advertisement. Biggie Smalls also appeared in a campaign for him as well. Carl Kanai's work was so admired by all that he managed to span the gap of the East Coast, West Coast rap beef thing, which was raging at that point in time. Everybody from Nas to Aaliyah to Wu-Tang and Snoop Dogg all consistently wore Carl Kanai. But by the mid-90s, he was well seasoned in the ways of the fashion industry, and with Threads for Life facing its own financial issues, he didn't really want that to smear his brand. So he took 500,000 of his own money and purchased the trademark back from Carl Jones, establishing his own imprint, Carl Kanai Infinity. However though, as the 90s wore on, Carl Kanai began to experience problems as a brand as well. Mainly, they were beginning to fall victim to the trend that they had helped start. The late 90s was the era of rap clothing lines, and every rapper who was somebody had their own brands. Not to mention, brands like Supreme and Stussy had began meshing the rap, rock, skate culture into a fresh new thing that would become later known as streetwear. So long story short, the lane that Carl Kanai had once occupied damn near alone had now become oversaturated and the game as a whole was changing. All these factors led to the deterioration of Carl Kanai publicly, and eventually, it faded into the background. For years, it looked like Carl Kanai was a relic of the past. Most, including myself, didn't think that we would ever see the brand on shelves again. But to all our surprise, in 2016, Carl Kanai relaunched. The nostalgia effect combined with Carl's designs drove hype back into the brand. Musicians began being seen wearing Carl Kanai again. Years later, although the brand isn't at the level that it once was, Carl Kanai definitely enjoys OG status. It was really the first brand to produce clothes specifically geared towards hip hop. Before them, not many even saw the culture as viable from a market standpoint. Carl Kanai showed everyone that that was laughably false. He spearheaded both trends that would later precede it, being the rap clothing line era and streetwear as a whole. And I'm not sure if it was his inability to pivot fast enough or what exactly that prevented Carl Kanai from strolling into the streetwear golden era like Stussy or Supreme managed to do. But either way, in my eyes, Carl Kanai is just as important to the genre as any other brand, if not more so. But what do you think? Do you remember Carl Kanai? Are you old enough to have had any of the OG stuff? Hit us up in the comment section and let us know. Also, if you made it this far, then we sincerely hope that that means you enjoyed the video. And if you did, then what you waiting for? Smash that like button for me. Liking and sharing the videos is the only way to help us to continue to grow as a channel. And if you want to be updated every time we drop a new episode, then hit the subscribe button and then the notification bell. That way you will be reminded with every time a new video drops. But with that being said, 
I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com, signing out. Until next time, peace.